Mr. Curtainbaum, why did you decide to continue production on the game of death? I feel like I personally owe it to Bruce to finish this picture. This was his passion project, statement to the world, and this was his Gone with the Wind. But Ronnie, how do you plan on completing the movie without its famous star? You see, we are going to do a worldwide search for the man who will literally be stepping into Bruce Lee's shoes to complete his performance. But Ronnie, won't it be obvious that it's someone else playing the same part as Bruce Lee? Film reality, my man, it's made in the editing room, you know? Okay, Eisenstein, you know, he taught us that with uh, associative editing, and that was 50 years ago. We're only limited by our own imaginations. <laughs> we meet again, Bob. Yeah. I knew you were a snake, Leroy Jackson. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter, because I will destroy both of you. Have you met my sirens of fury? Oh, you've joined the Nazi party. Sorry for all of you in the afterlife. Ninjas! <laughs> you know, I really don't know why people keep confusing me and Bruce. I mean, seriously, we are two totally different actors. Yes, but don't you see the obvious similarities? Look, the cat wears a yellow jumpsuit on the big screen. I'm always wearing a blue one. He's Bruce Lee, I'm Breeze Lou. It's kind of like Pepsi and Coke. I can guarantee you one thing. Anyone who's ever taken that Pepsi challenge, you can definitely taste the difference. Is it true that you don't do any of your own fighting? That's correct. I mean, why should I, right? I'm an actor. There's a name for actors that actually do their own fighting, called stuntmen. To me, acting's all right here in the eyes. Then what do you think of Bruce Lee's acting? You know, I wouldn't really know. I've never seen any of his films. Really? Come on. I've done 14 films in the last two years. I've been a little busy. Why are you entertaining the idea of finishing his film? The cat and I are peers. I figure if I was the one who passed early, I hope you'd done the same for me. Yes, master. Would you like another? What do you think? Oh, I think that was pretty mm. good. I like that one. Yeah? You sure? Well, I asked uh, Saragina to be my manager. Yeah, but I'm still his lady. You know, it's the ultimate <laughs> when you get to work with someone you really love. Yeah, yeah. I'd do anything for Cole. And what is it you two are doing here at these studios? Well, well to... you, know. <laughs> you go first, honey. Well, I'm here to be in my first Hollywood movie. I feel really blessed. Yeah, yeah, I was at the swap meet and I found this flyer that said that the trombone thief part three was needing someone to play the butler. And I only have one line, but you know, I think it's a big deal because they're already on part three. Yeah, plus this gives us momentum to go right into the game of death. It's a perfect Both career move. Yeah. Are you on set now, man? Butler 
think it's one of those European films. Yeah. You do golden showers? Um, I'm cold, Kim. I'm, I'm playing the butler. Oh, well, go change it to your butler outfit and sit outside the door as I'm humping the blonde and I'm chumping on the Oriental's fur burger. Look to the peephole. I want you to whack off. Okay, go. Wardrobe. Whack off? Yes, whack off. The fucky sucky is reserved for me. Daylight, come on. Change. I forget you. Amateurs. Give me another butler, okay? <laughs> quickly, quickly. Aim low, okay? I want to see the hardcore. If you don't see the hardcore, don't shoot it at all. You got that? Okay, guys, come on. Stick it right in her ass. That's it. A little deeper. Good. One more time. Stop fighting. That's a nice little cup. Yeah, Bend over. Please. Oh, that's, that's great. Today's my first day as a doctor. Uh, seven years of schooling, three years as a resident. Today's my last day as a doctor. I'm quitting to become an actor. I'm a little confused. Well, for as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a ninja or an actor. So then why did you choose to go into the medical field? Um, when I was 15, my mom got ill. Before she died, she asked me for one thing, to become a doctor. Today, I fulfilled that promise to her. Tomorrow, I try to fulfill my promise to myself. But do you think that's what she intended when she asked you to become a doctor? I kept a promise. That's all I could say. So how do you intend to jump into the entertainment industry after all these years of medical school? <laughs> you know, I've, I've done my best to incorporate my theater training into my medical career. <laughs> Very good, Victor, but it's more like a groan from below. Ooh. Right, and you're having a kidney stone, so the pain is in your lower abdomen or groin. Yeah. Try again. As an intern, I came up with the idea to work with actors as patients so that med school students could have real people to diagnose. It's sort of like community theater, except everyone's sick all the time. About uh, film experience. Uh, I've done some film work here and there. Um, I got to uh, work as a stunt double. I've even uh, worked as Breeze Lou stunt double a couple of times. It's not exactly what I want to do, but I get to combine two things I love the most: acting and martial arts. I was hired by NASA's outreach division to raise awareness about the new Skylab project in the space race against the Russians. Uh, I made public appearances as Addy the Astro Duck, and they treat me like a king, especially the moms. Now, is space exploration an important issue for you? Uh, actually, no. I think there are far bigger problems here on Earth and here in this country. Can you elaborate on that? Well, racism, for one. Our people have been oppressed for far too long. Really? Yeah, I think it's shocking. There have been no reparations for the abuse our people suffered building the railroads in the 1860s. I mean, that's just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. But, Tarek, um, aren't you Caucasian? I'm half Chinese. So, um, so Tarek, um, why do you want to audition for the game of death? I admire Bruce Lee as a role model for the Asiatic community. Come on. I try to be the same. I, mean, I admit my work's on a smaller, uh, more humble, grassroots level, but I think that reaching out to promote the Yellow Brotherhood certainly has its place. 
do you really feel like you have a shot at getting the part? Nothing has ever been given to me. My life has been a continual struggle. It's that very struggle that fuels my art. You call me slanty eyes. I stay silent, but my eyes can see the damage being done to me. Railroad worker, railroad worker, emasculated half man. I don't deny there's a piece of me long dead on the tracks. But I am railroaded every day, tracked and trapped. But never defeated. Never defeated. But also, never free. can't deny it. But what about the people they visit, the ones they encounter? The noble savages, the angry pygmies, the exotic geishas, and the street thugs. All of them colored folks. And when I say colored, I mean all colors. Hollywood needs these colors to paint their pictures. And I'm the one who delivers the variety. I represent Latinos, Orientals, and Afro-Americans. Hell, I even got clients who are Afro-Latinos and Latin Orientals. You want them? I got them. Some of my clients have even stepped into the spotlight and made a real name for themselves, courtesy of Roy Thunder. Troy Poon was the co-star of a hit primetime TV show. Shank, bring this clown down to the squad car. Hey, man, I ain't gonna do your laundry. Hey, man, I ain't gonna do your laundry. Troy's tagline swept the nation. J.J. Walker had nothing on him. time we met, you had the gun to my head. I should have shot you when I had the chance. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, Robbie. Any last requests? Hey, Chang, why don't you send for someone to pick up this rotting corpse? Hey, I ain't gonna do your laundry. You know what I like about you, Chang? What? Absolutely nothing. It was the highest rated show in the country on Friday nights. But after only nine episodes, something horrible happened. Actor Dean Silo, best known for his role as tough-talking detective Rob Force in Golden Gate Guns, was found dead early this morning in his Beverly Hills home. I'm here on the scene with Officer Williams. Officer Williams, when did Dean Silo pass away? Well, the preliminary report put the time of death at approximately 3.37 a.m. And the circumstances surrounding his demise? 
Well, based on the position of the body of the deceased and several pieces of evidence, it appears that Mr. Silo was in the midst of self-asphyxiation and attempted autofillation at the time of death. Thank, thank you, uh, Officer Williams. Traces Back. of several substances were found in, on, or around the body, including amphetamine, morphine, dramamine, codeine, sizzling, quinine, quad lewds, preludes, mescaline, methadone, methadust, angel dust, mercocet, percocet, darvocet, roxocet, vicodin, oxycontin, tin, LSD, CPC, PYT, amphetamines, barbiturates, and Elmer's glue. Also, several male juvenile pornographic magazines and a giant Nazi flag were strewn around the body, and the deceased was wearing a Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizards outfit. Needless to say, Troy's show got canceled, and all the networks refused to air the reruns. For me, a job in sales is, is the same as an acting gig. You know, I mean, it really is. The only difference is you, um, you're performing in front of a smaller crowd. Hello, how are you? My name is Troy Poon. Do you have a moment? I'd like to show you a great product. Aren't you... on the television? Yes, yes, that's me. <laughs> Do you have a moment? I'd like to show you the magical power. Why not? Can you make it back here, machine? <laughs> Don't mind the mess. The more mess, the better. That's what this thing is for. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, the Megavac clean machine is extremely simple to put together. See? I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Oh. Beautiful. Its sucking power is unrivaled. Oopsie. Let's see how the new Megavac clean machine handles the job. Sorry to interrupt, but could you say it? Excuse me? That little thing you say about the laundry. Please say it for us. Oh, yeah. Just once. Me, 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 Today is the first day of your auditions. Um, what are you experiencing right now? I imagine this is how Godard felt when he was casting Breathless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but on to the new Bruce Lee. Yeah. Right? So I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. A loud, intimidating type, like a like a like a hip Genghis Khan. You know? Well, he needs to be the silent, calm type with an inner strength. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, that's what I meant. You know, I, I, don't, I don't mean loud in like a volume sort of way. You know, like, I'm Bruce Lee, screaming. I, I meant that he has an intense internal power. Ronnie. Yeah. yeah. When you work with these young directors, you very often have to give them what they need, even though they're not yet aware they need it. You know, 90% of filmmaking, it's the casting. So this is the time to lend my support to a young director. You know, give him my years of experience right now. Well, I love open auditions. All bets are on, and anything is possible. You never know when you might discover the next Pat Morita or the new Estero. You got a great look. Great look. Roy Thunder, talent manager. Colored people? Last time I checked, yellow was a color, my man. The 
casting process isn't about which of us is better than the other or who's more right for the part. Honestly, it all comes down to covering your bases. For example, I happen to know Cassie thinks I'm a great lay. She rode me for six days last summer. I wound up with a guest spot on Sanford and Son. Now, that may be a coincidence, but I'm not willing to take the chance that it was. You are the best in the room. You are filled with strength and power. But all around you is, is weakness and insecurity. They are afraid of you because they all know that the part is yours. Open your eyes and look at them. Really look at them. They're weak. Hey, is... Yeah, I think that's Breeze Lou. Uh, Cole? Cole, you're disrupting my exercise. But it's Breeze Lou. Who cares? You're Cole Kim. I gotta go meet him. Well, he's the competition. But he's Breeze Lou. <laughs> Solid, baby, solid. Peace. Hey, Mr. Lou. Hey, brother. My name is Cole Kim, and I'm a big fan of yours. Very cool, and very I cool. I love Fist of Fear, and I, I've seen Exit of the Serpent like 17 times. Oh, that's <laughs> a lot of times, brother. And, and your moves, you know, they're like flawless. <laughs> you know, how, how do you kick three guys at the same time? Oh, Saragina, Mr. Breeze Lou. Oh. It was like he was sleeping with the enemy. I couldn't believe he was talking with him. Awesome. Oh, I didn't think it was a big deal. Michael was a nice guy. It made you soft. It, it made you lose your edge. Edge? Yeah, I, you asked him to autograph your shirt. Well, what else was he supposed to sign? Cole. Cole. <laughs> I look, imagine you saw Warren Beatty. I mean, what would you do? Okay, Breeze Lou is no Warren Beatty. <laughs> You can't beat up three guys at the same time. Oh, Reggie. <laughs> How you doing, baby? This cat makes me look real good on the big screen. Don't you, Reg? <laughs> hey, baby. I'm here to see the director. Oh, great. Um, your name is? It's Lou. Breeze Lou. Okay, Mr. Liu, you are in Group C, so it's gonna be about an hour before we send you guys in. Whoa, 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 kitty cat. I need an audition. I'm here to meet the director. Oh, <laughs> you know, the, the director is unavailable right now, so what I can do is I can put you into Group A. Do you mind if I use your phone? Of course, we have a pay phone right outside. Now, I understand one of your current clients will be auditioning. Oh, Troy, I got him this amazing opportunity. Not the usual oriental bit part. I'm talking leading yellow role in a film with serious distribution. That's like Nixon visiting me and watch. It just don't happen, baby. Thunder. I need to Thunder, talk to you. Thunder, Troy, look, we in right in the middle of the sound, baby. Now. You you got this amazing, this guy in my interview going, Troy, look. Baby, wait, look, Troy. Thunder. Why, huh? Why did you send me here? It's a big part. This is not a part. It's a body double gig, man. But it's an opportunity. I can't believe you're actually trying to sell me on this. Look, Troy, come on, man. Look what's out there. I know you don't want to go back to playing delivery boys. No, of course not. But this... This is even more insulting. Troy, what do you got to lose? You know what? You ain't doing shit for color people, Thunder. Troy, hold it, man. Look. You're making a big mistake. Yeah. Big mistake. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. Don't stand behind me. Thanks so much over there. Hi, everyone. I wanted to welcome you to the auditions for The Game of Death. My name is Eloise. I am the casting director. And this is Ronnie, and he's the director of the film. I wanted to tell you how much I appreciate you being here today. I'm very grateful, and I appreciate your time and patience. Absolutely. All right, so now look, to find the best man for the role, guys, we are going to have three rounds of auditions. Not six, three. It's just so you can all see this. Okay? And it's going to be a really, really fun process. So how about just to kick it off, raise your hand if you have formal conservatory training with an emphasis on Shakespeare. Wow. Good for you. That is, yes, very good for you. I love the classics. Excellent. So you know what? How about all of you eager people with your hands up in the air can follow Cassie here right out that door. Thank you so much. It's pretty simple. You know, I have found over the years that the actors, with all of that training, you know, they spend so much time connecting to their inner truth. You know, they don't connect to the average moviegoer. You know what I mean? And our Bruce Lee needs to be the kind of guy middle America can really relate to. You know, someone, someone like Larry in Omaha would drink a bud with. You know what I mean? I mean, the last thing we need is some educated, snooty Bruce Lee to alienate America. Right, Ronnie? Yeah. Yeah. So what's going to be happening during today's audition? Well, today in this round, we give the actors sides, these pages right here with basically their lines on them. And um, it's a cold reading today, meaning the actors have never seen the lines. Specifically, what kind of qualities are you looking for from these gentlemen today? Well... You know, it depends on the person. Everyone brings something different. But I really would like to see the relationship between the text and the subtext. It's very important what an actor brings in, you know, on his own, which is in between the lines, but what he also does with the text, you know? You offended me. You offended my family. Great, wonderful, thank you. My name is Remy Wynn. I would like very much to be part of your movie. In my village in Vietnam, I dreamed of being on the big Hollywood movie screen. My parents, they would be proud to see me that way. But they didn't make it out of Saigon. I dedicate this to them. Okay, let's get started. You offend me, you offend my family. That was nice. Can I give him a note? Can you try it one more time? But I want you to think about your family stuck in Saigon. You offended me. You offended my family. You have offended me. You have offended my family. You offended me. You offended my family. You offended me. You offended my family. Can we lose the glasses? Can we I, take your I, I, I really bother. like to see. I wouldn't bother. I think he's just bad. I think he's. I think. I think you're not ready for this. I don't, let's not, let's move on. You offended me. You offended my family. Mm hmm Can you hold on one second? I think we should ask him to do a move, see if we can inspire some more aggression. Turn me. Is that all right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe just to get a little bit more voice out of you. Did you I see the outfit. Do you know a little karate, a little jiu-jitsu or something? I do. 
Would you mind, uh, maybe you can say the line this time doing some type of a move. You offended me. You offended my family. Better. It was way better. A lot better. Way better. There he is. Here I am. The man. <laughs> you look great, Reese. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, you look fantastic, Reese. Fantastic. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I have a question, though. Shoot. You guys are a powerful agency, right? That's the word in the street. I mean, you cats are in the Hollywood Big Three. Am I not right? Number one in the Big Three. Wow. So that must mean you guys have a lot of muscle. There. Might makes right. How many feature films have I starred in, in let's say, past two years? Fourteen. Wow. You cats remembered. Of course. You're a star, Breezy. Oh, stop that. <laughs> stop. That's the truth, man. Thank you. Yeah. But I'm a bit confused. Why is that? If you cats are such a powerful agency, and I'm such a big star, then why the fuck am I standing here like a motherfucking idiot at this goddamn motherfucking cattle call? Breezy, there must have been some sort of mix. A, a, a little confusion, that's all. Confusion? What is so fucking confusing about offer only? Offer only? Well, straighten it right up, Breezy. Do you have any idea how humiliating this is for me? I can only imagine. It's awful. It's, it's awful. Breezy. I know this place. It's like a concentration camp. It's beneath you. It's offer only. You dig? You got it. Trust me, I'll take care of this. Let's take care of this, fellas. It's done. No, no, I thought he was completely contrived. He had no subtext, you know? There were, there were no layers. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I don't disagree. I completely hear what you're saying. He's not a very strong actor, you know? But as I understand it, we're looking for a star, not an actor, you know? And I mean, they're very different, completely different animals. And for star searching, I think it comes down to something much more immediate and, and visceral. Like what? Fuckability. I simply ask myself, do I want to fuck that guy? And since we're looking for the new Bruce Lee, the question should really be, do I need to fuck this guy? You know? Give me an example of someone you need Charlton to fuck. Charlton Heston. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. I didn't think he got to be Moses. Ben-Hur, the uh, guy with the apes, the world wants to fuck Charlton Heston. Uh, this guy, here. He's no Charlton Heston, but I fuck him. After a few gin and tonics, I would fuck him silly. I mean, he deserves a callback, for sure. All right, well, who, who in this group would you fuck sober? Hmm, sober. Yeah. Oh, him. Him? A star? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? Charisma, sensitivity, a presence. He's got that, you know, refugee survivor grit. Yeah, oh, and I would, I'd fuck him good. I, I mean, look, I'm not saying he'd be like a Steve McQueen kind of movie star, but, you know, he's got Gene Hackman potential for sure. Oh, yeah. I'd fuck him. Right? All right. Yeah, so who would you fuck unconditionally? <sighs> unconditionally. So is someone going to say, like, action or something like that? Would you like that? Okay. If you like it. Sure. Would sure. you like that? I will. This is Ronnie, the director. So he's going to call action. Thank you. Okay. Right. Action. You've offended me, and you've offended my family. Cole, can I ask you to do it again? Of course, sure. Okay. Do, I mean, I, I, if you want me to, like, change it around or something like that, Just, I can. Can you wait one second? Um, maybe, just, yeah, go ahead. Just maybe a little more intensity. You seem happy about yeah, it. Happy that they offended you. Well, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> no, right. I know, and that's yeah. really nice. <laughs> that's and we're good. thrilled to have you. But we Cole, are. maybe a little, you know, anger. Anger is hurt turned out. I think, I think maybe a little anger. You've offended me, and you've offended my family. Oh. 
What? Oh, come on. I mean, maybe if he had, like, the teensiest bit of confidence, but this guy... Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I... I yeah, I would still fuck him. Even without the confidence. No. No, you think so, but you wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. I would, and... He... wouldn't have to buy me dinner beforehand. I would just... Fuck him. All right, Ronnie, are you listening to yourself? Because now you just sound silly. What? what who, who are you to tell me who I want to fuck? No, oh, you're totally right. You're right. You, you can want to fuck whoever you please because you're the director. Absolutely. I'm sorry. You're right. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you for waiting. We are finally ready. And before I put the list up, I just want to congratulate all of you. We saw some really wonderful auditions today. Congratulations. Have a good night. Yeah. Yes. I told you. I told you. We made it. So, Raja, how do you feel right now? All I could say is I did my best. Do you think that you'll return to your career in the medical field? Probably not. I heard Warner's is doing a musical about Geronimo. Maybe I could pass for an Indian. The breeze. How often do you get to relax like this near the pool? You know what most people don't realize? Being an actor is a 24-hour job, man. Like right now, I'm working. I'm taking the time to fine-tune my appearance in order to be that image that's on the screen that's bigger than life, baby. See, Breeze Lou isn't just the cat that you see sitting in front of you right now. No. Breeze Lou is an idea. He's a force of nature that includes each and every individual out there that keeps that breeze loo jugging out alive and pumping. I work very hard at what it is that I do. All I ask is for those individuals out there to do the exact same thing, pull their weight. That's why I fired my agents. So then what's your next career move? I've got the Bruce Lee audition tomorrow. Wait, but what about your refusal to audition and your offer only policy? I realize that it's a bit premature for me to be considering any offers at this point in time. Mainly because the producer and the director really don't know how much it is that they need me. So, I'm gonna go through this audition process. They're gonna see firsthand how much better I am than the competition. And then, they're gonna have to pay the full price of what the Breezy Breeze is worth. Five hundred dollars, that's what we pay for Breezy. We couldn't have children of our own. Oh, well, we certainly tried, but it, uh... Well, we got breezy when we lost Penny, and that was horrible. Yeah, yeah Penny was our cocker spaniel, and she died, and my wife was uh, so upset, so uh, to, uh, to make her feel better, uh, we got Clarence. Breeze. Breeze. Five hundred dollars, that's what it cost. Tom, don't talk prices. Well, that's a lot of money then. Well, Breezy certainly is generous with us. Oh. He gave us this house and a big Cadillac and all this art. Oh, well, we sure as hell won't forget what it looks like, that's for sure. My dad fought in the Korean War. That's where he met my mom and me. Yeah, most guys, they would have made the women leave the babies, but not Cole's dad. Yeah, if not for him, I never would have met Cole. Yeah, we grew up in Alabama where you know, I was the only Asiatic. Saragina was the only Colombian in town. Mm. We weren't very popular. Yeah, if I got hit in the head in the bottle, 
I know it was the white kids. If it was a rock, it was black kids. It all hurt the same. We dreamed of leaving the South. We even tried getting rid of our Southern accents. Yeah, we sit around for hours, you know, talking like our favorite movie stars. Mm -hmm. Mine was Grace Kelly. Mr. Rogers. Food and never fall, you won't be bought and sold. Food and never fall, you won't be bought and sold. Food and never fall, you won't be bought and sold. Food and never fall, you won't be bought and sold. Food and never fall, you won't be bought and sold. Food and never fall, you won't be bought and sold. Food and never fall, you won't be bought and sold. Tarek's always been very active, just like his dad. Many men abandon their families with all sorts of pathetic excuses, but Derek, Tarek's dad, was in his own league. First of all, he was a real narcissist. He named his sons Garrick, Tarek, and Eric. If we had girls, what the hell would he have named them? Anyway, the marriage didn't work out, mainly because Derek was a, an abusive drunk. Can't believe I put up with that shit. He moved to Cincinnati after the divorce. I was relieved to tell you the truth but completely cut off all contact with the kids. His own sons, I mean, who does that? He wanted to start a new family, fine. But guess what he had the balls to name the new kids? Garrick, Tarek, and Eric, same goddamn names in the same goddamn order. Who does that? I used to have meaty roles that any actor would kill for. I was entrusted to play characters well beyond my age range and from various walks of life. That was college. Hey, man, have you seen my brownies? I saw them, and then I ate them. <laughs> you what? That's my evidence. I don't know what to tell you, man. The more I ate, the hungrier I got. <laughs> That would be 1439. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what you are? You're nothing but a big old. Now that's what I call saved by the bed. Hi. That'll be 1176. Well, the good news is I've been in 12 feature films and 23 TV shows. Okay, that would be 969. The bad news is, every role except for one was a Chinese food delivery boy. Last week, I got a call from this agency. They said they want to represent me. I mean, this could be huge for my career. Gentlemen, this is Troy Poon. There he is. They're up, one of the biggies. Finally, I mean, representation with power. They can fight for my artistic integrity. Troy, thank you for coming in. Really appreciate it. That's good to be here. We think you're a movie star. So no more TV. We are gonna reintroduce you to the world in a big way. I just got you a meeting with this hip young director who's starting a major motion picture. And he's looking for a yellow lead. I mean, this flick has a built-in audience already. There'll be a lot of action. Some cool camera work. Groovy soundtrack. Troy, we're talking major opportunity here. You ever hear of Bruce Lee? Anyway, he's hotter now than when he was alive. Huh. Imagine getting to be Bruce Lee. Right when it matters most. When the hell was that? Huh? Cole, why did you choose Sarah Gina to be your manager? Well, I told her I was going to be an actor. I think the idea of me kissing another woman upset her. Well, I mean, when you feel so strongly for someone, it's, it's hard to see them do something like that with someone else. But what if there's a kissing scene in the game of death? Well, Sarah Gina's going to be right there with me. And she's going to realize it's not a big deal, right? 
has your relationship been affected by your new professional partnership? It's been um, a bit challenging uh, because as his girlfriend, I try not to tell him what to do, but as his manager, I have to tell him what to do. Oh, I don't. I mean, we can figure it out together. But I'm your manager. You asked me to be your manager. I know. That's my job. I'm, I'm doing my job. What do you expect me to do? Well, you're doing a great job, honey. You're doing a great job. No, I'm not. You know, you don't even listen to me. I'm trying to help you, but you're running around getting autographs. You're eating chili fries when you're supposed to be fit, and... and... See? I wind up feeling like your mother. See, see, I'm listening, okay? Oh, baby. I, I, I'm serious. I mean, you, you're doing a great job, okay? You're doing a gr great job. Can you pass me a napkin? So round two, I thought, you know, they all take karate classes and things, so I needed something that was going to separate the boys from the men. Attention! Give us one line, face in front. Now. So I thought Mac and TJ, having had all that Vietnam experience, you know, killing, you know, babies and running around hurting civilian people, I kind of feel like they have a life experience that is going to lend a little, uh, <clears throat> a little gutso to this process. I understand we're here to help you pretend to be real men. Is that right? <laughs> That's kind of funny to me. Because on the battlefield, you're either a shit bag or the real deal. There's no mistake in the two. See, the real men, they march towards the danger. These shit bags, they stay back because they never grew the balls to battle. Tell you the truth, you all look like shitbags to me. But you're gonna get a chance to prove me wrong. You will be called upon to engage in one-on-one -on -one combat. See if any of you have any fight in you. Do you understand? Yes, sir! Sir! Oh. A military boy. <laughs> you serve for Uncle Sam? No. <laughs> Fucking pussy. Whoa, 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 Who do we have here? What's your name, boy? And I mean, Win. Win. Isn't that a commie name? No. I fight the Viet Cong. Sneaky bastards, aren't they? What's so funny, Deuce Face? Nothing. Oh. You think you're something special, don't you? I'm gonna keep my eye on you. We think it's sad what America has come to. All you pinko fucking hippies taking our freedom for granted. Mac here, he gave up his eye for your freedom. And you wanna know how you showed your gratitude? I said, do you wanna know how you showed your gratitude? Yeah. You spit on us and burned our flag after we went through hell for you. Never knowing where the next bull was That's gonna right. come from. Tell him, Mac. Going into a village, mm -hmm. not knowing who to shoot, who to kill. Tell them how it was, man. Hearing and, and smelling them, them goddamn commies everywhere. Uh, talk about the hell, man. Crawling on our bellies through the jungle. While those uh, bouncers were tongued right under us, ready to slice and dice us. about and, the hell, and eat man. us to dinner. That's hell. <laughs> hell was hell. Hell was getting called a gook by your own platoon. While they step on your injured body and leave you for dead in the middle of my live village. That's hell. Thinking you're the enemy. Spitting up blood, gasping for air, choking on your own vomit. But let me make this clear. I would have gone through that hell 14 times over to serve my country. Oh, that was good. That was good too. Yeah, kill him. 
Lou, what do you think about today's part of the audition process? No, I'm not exactly sure what this round is for, man. I mean, are we auditioning for an acting role? It's a little overwhelming at times, you know? I mean, that you're, you're in front of Mr. Lou like that. I mean, it's your idol, you know? I mean, like, I've seen him in tons of movies, you know? I mean, I, that's, that's the reason I became an actor. couldn't take it anymore, you know? Um, it was bad enough that my client, Cole, choked, but I just couldn't handle the disappointment I felt towards my boyfriend, Cole. You know, it was just, it was too much. So, so that's why I broke up with him. Uh, but I'm still his manager, though. And um, so now I can guide his career without any of the guilt or the uh, conflict or the drama. I need to talk to you. I'm Turn off the, the camera. Of an Say, shut it off. We're, we're in the middle Get out. of something we're here. In the middle you shut your face. You need to calm down right now. Look, I, I want your back. We agreed that this is how it needs to be. No! Ah! Stupid face! Finally, it was my chance to prove my value, show them who I really am. You know, the, the color of my skin, my economic class, none of it mattered. I was, I was expressing myself. The room was captivated. I could feel it. And then he showed up. Eli. Hi. Ronnie. Hey, how are ya? When my step cousin was traveling abroad, he caught Eli in a movie and tipped me off immediately. I mean, he may be unknown here, but he just won the New Zealand Oscar for Best Actor. And I think it's just a matter of time before he is the next David Carradine. You know what I'm saying? G'day, guys. Why don't you... Eli waltzed in late. Like, he owned the fucking place. All right. he, he didn't even show up the first round of auditions. I mean, how fair is that? Some of us know what struggle is. Some of us have had to fight to get where we are. Eli is not some of us. So how's it all going, everyone? It's good. Great. Yeah, it's good fun. Eli. Yeah, he's pretty good. It's so obvious. It is. I mean, he is Bruce Lee. You know? Well, hold on. I mean, let's not get carried away with ourselves. We have we have a few very, very solid options. It'll close the deal and cancel the next round. There's no need to keep looking. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? It would be a waste of everyone's time to keep looking. Uh, okay, Ronnie, you ought to know. That's just not how it's done. I'm the director. Cast him now. So, Eli, what's it like to be offered this role? Well, there's a certain amount of satisfaction that I feel when, when my work is acknowledged, you know? 
Uh, what challenges do you expect to encounter when you take over for Bruce Lee? Well, you mean if I choose to take the role? Are you suggesting you're not going to accept the part? Well, there's some questions that I need answered first before I agree to anything. Like what? Well, firstly, am I working with the right people? You know, it's important to me. Secondly, is this really a safe and nurturing environment for me? And third, how is this for my career, you know? Uh, I'm trying to build one, so it's important right now. You know, this cat, Eli, does he have anything going on in his eyes? No. Does he even indicate for one second what's going on up here, why he fights? No. I see. But do you think that his presence in the competition will affect your chances? Absolutely not. The cat's parlor tricks are just an act of desperation because he knows he doesn't have what it is that I was innately born with. True power and the ability to destroy with my very presence. This is just unacceptable. All I ask for is a fair fight. Instead, I'm stuck here. We're stuck here, in limbo, waiting. The studio just doesn't get it. Eli's not even American. He's not even close to American. And they're allowing him to come in here and hijack this whole process. Typical. Foreigners coming in here and taking our jobs. We Asian Americans have it bad enough. This is just insult to injury. So what's about to happen next? Well, Eli called a meeting. Of course he did. Well, what do I do? It's, Ronnie, it's an actor thing, okay? You just stroke his dick a bit and, you know, he'll feel better. It's standard procedure, okay? <sighs> G'day, fellas. Hi. Hey, I got you some coffee. Thank you. Hey, Louise. I just need to speak to the director alone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Alone. You mean us? Oh. No, just the boom guy. Of course I mean you. All right. What's on your mind? Are you okay? Do you want to talk? I'm here for you, Ronnie. Come on, Ronnie. Look, it's not like he's Jesus or something. I mean, we can do a lot better than, you know, Eli from New Zealand. Ronnie. All right, Ronnie, not to state the obvious or anything, but Eli, not a team player. You know, Eli cares only about Eli. He, he would have been a nightmare to work with. Trust me. Ronnie, Ronnie, what's your next move? You don't have to touch me. Ronnie. Ronnie, sweetheart. Pussy. Okay, Ronnie. Ronnie, we haven't even seen the other actors on screen yet. You know, and that's where it counts. I mean, do you have any amazing stars seemed you know, pathetic? They were shit till they were projected on the silver screen. That is how it goes, Ronnie. I mean, our best is probably still with us. Ronnie. All right. Ronnie, here's what I'm going to do for you, okay? I am going to handle everything from here on, all right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the screen test myself, and I will make the final choices for the studio. 
Okay, so don't you worry about it. I'm only surprised that it took you so long. <laughs> it takes time to track down cowards like you. I wasn't the one who ran away last time. It's because you were hiding behind the army of Venom. <laughs> excuses, excuses. I'm shocked to see you're fighting your own battles. You will pay for your audacity. Run, baby! It's a trap! Kimberly, I'm not going anywhere without you. I've got to hand it to you, brother. You always did have good taste in women. Brother. In school, you always got the pretty ones, unlike me. You can't let the past be your master. And you can never master the past. But, my dear brother, I can seize the present. You keep her out of this, brother. This is between you and me. We're not kids anymore. You can't tell me what to do. And besides, you're in no position to call the shots now. Well, I can't let you get away with this. Move another inch closer, and you will have a very dead girlfriend. Do you really think I'm gonna let stand here? Do you really think I'm gonna stand here and let... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, can we just cut that and we'll just start from the top? No, we're fine, Bruce. Oh, why don't we just, uh, we'll go six lines back when I enter the forest. He's good, I'm good. He's seen all he needs to see. It's I'm enough. good. Yeah, but we, we don't have a clean take. It's We've enough. seen it, we've seen it. You're fine. It's enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Breeze. Thanks, Breeze. That's ridiculous, Breeze. They cut you off early. You, you were just getting started. I know. I thought we were working with professionals. I agree. And that's why you need someone who will fight for you. Someone like me. Cole, you ready? Are you calling? Thanks. Cole, you ready? Cole? Okay, let's go. Roll camera. Mark it. Action. Look at you. You're powerless. Tongue tied, brother. She may be holding the cards, but you have nothing. That's why you're trying to take everything away from me. But it won't work. Because you have to live with yourself. Who are you? Really? The worst kind of villain that pretends to be something that they're not. A monster who acts like they care about people, but then will betray them when they least expect it. Yeah, I may have been a fool for trusting you, but that was my biggest crime, but you... Oh, you'll get what you deserve. Maybe not now. But all your lies will catch up to you. And you'll be left alone. To see yourself. And suffer. Wow. Wow, incredible. Where's he going? Cole, that was... Cole? Oh, my... Who is Bruce? What the fuck is Breeze? Screen test to me is like uh, going to the bathroom for anyone else. 
It's not exactly fair because I have so much more camera time than pretty much any of the other candidates. That, you know, for me, it's the difference between preparation and actually acting. It's pretty seamless. It's not really there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, fucker. Oh. Guys, guys, breeze. What's happening? Breeze, breeze. Is everyone okay up there? Breeze, breeze, keep Cole. Can you hear me? What was it like to see Sarah Gina talking to Breeze? She just betrayed me in front of my face. That's all I have to say. Breeze. What do you think of Cole Kim now? He's a coward. I mean, only a true coward would Pearl Harbor someone like this. Why do you think he attacked you? It's the price of fame, baby. <laughs> what do you think the chances are of you getting this part? Well, it was even a question from the start. I mean, seriously, take a look. I'm the real deal, baby. I mean, this is a big time Hollywood studio film. I mean, do you even think the studio for one second was even considering giving it to one of those other cats? Come on. Hey, Doc. Reggie, when'd you become a doctor? What the hell is going on here? My name is Raja. Really? Cole. Cole is intense. He did some really good work. He did. But, uh... I'm sorry, I gotta go with my gut. And the gut never lies. Okay, well, uh... I don't know, he's kinda... I don't feel comfortable around him at all. Really? No, he's really creepy. <laughs> well, Ronnie Jack Nicholson's kinda creepy. I mean, creepy's... creepy's in. No. Well, you know what? We've got Breeze. I mean, Breeze is a pretty safe bet. Makes sense. Okay. All right. So, Breeze. Yes. Okay. Cole and Breeze. Okay. Anyone else? No. No. No one else is really gonna cut it, I don't think. Well, we need to find one or two more for the studio to no. cover our ass. Yeah, fine. I have my pick, so you can choose the backups. <clears throat> okay, well, Cassie, uh, why don't you choose the backups? Okay? Okay. Great. Sure. Yeah. They will tell you you are not, you are not unique. You are not one of a kind. You are. You are. And in your poetry, when you speak, you express, this is my gift. Oh my God, what happened? Excuse me, excuse, excuse us. Uh, what the hell is going on here? Okay, okay no, first of all, where in the hell is Cole? I've He's been, our best I, I've bet. been calling him all day. He's not picking up his phone. Fuck. Okay, someone tell me why the fuck the white guy Yeah, someone tell us why up. the white guy showed up. Please? He's like a fucking fungus. I asked you for two legitimate backups. I called Hey, him. Dad. Hey. Do you understand? Mr. Curtainbaum, I would like to introduce you to the finalists for the film. Would you get him out of here, please? What? Would you please go? Get him out. Out of the office? Now. Now. Oh, you too, please. Please. Look, I'm going to ask you once. Would you please go? Go. Can you stay for just no, a few no, minutes. This will just take a few minutes. 
I told you once, I told you twice, now go! Are you guys fucking retards or what? We just spent a week of good money on this bullshit! Do you have any idea, any idea what's going on here? You give me some crippled chink, a white guy, and some guy who's obviously, what, two feet taller than the real Bruce Lee? God! You're, you're fired. And you're fired! Dad. Fired! Dad. Fired! Fired! Dad, Dad please! Go! Ron, Ronnie had a vision of, of a man who, 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 who we can't go. find and... Go! Okay, 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 okay. Please, would you okay, go? Okay. Go! Dad. Oh, all right! Dad, please. Okay, okay, please. Dad, please. Sir! Go! Oh, you. Who said you could stay? Take your fucking fishing pole and go fish somewhere else! But not in my pond! So how do you plan on completing the film now? We are in the business of making money. It's very simple. We own some footage of someone who's very famous, but he's dead. We need to find someone who looks like him so we can walk around for an hour or so or whatever, so we can package the picture and sell it as a whole movie. Eh, what's so hard about that? Well, are you gonna conduct another search to find the replacement for Bruce Lee? Search? What search are you talking about? I could go down to fucking Chinatown and find someone who looks just like him? Five minutes. Yeah, but do you think that would be the, the right person for the part? Faster than you could say Egg Fu Young. Egg Fu Young. I found him. And his brother. Once again, bringing you the best of you of the wild, wild west. Now, this 74 Gremlin is a peppy little critter that will easily outrun any rapscallion in a day or to race it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's got 63,000 miles, and it's listed at $470. $470? I think that's hogwash. I'm giving you for $440. That's right. I said $440. I'm not bluffing. But you got to mosey on down here mighty quick, because this year Gremlin's going fast, fast, fast. I ain't got no satisfaction. No satisfaction, it's satisfaction, no satisfaction. Hey. Frankly, that whole audition process was eye-opening for me. It, it made me realize the, that uh, the only way to affect change is from a position of power. No longer will I be at the mercy of someone else's whims, you know? And what is it you're doing now? Uh, I'm directing and starring in my first film. But it's not just a, a movie I'm creating. It's a, it's a watershed event. Until now, the Asian American male has been uh, neutered and castrated by being systematically excluded from the sexual landscape of America. Is that why you went into pornography? It's a revolution. Cole and Sarah Gina, what's been happening with you two? Well, we were having a few problems, but we worked them out. Mm -hmm. We're getting married. 